Hey, thank you so much for watching. This video is going to be on transparency in Mozilla Hubs and Blender. All right, so up next is this glass material. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about transparencies. There are a couple of different ways you can do transparent materials in Mozilla Hubs. There's Alpha Blend and Alpha Clip. Alpha Blend is a way to have 0 to 255 values of transparency, as any like texture map will provide, in order for you to have a uh, gradation and, and different levels of transparencies. This is super useful for glass and, and other types of, you know, uh, materials with m dirt on the glass or whatever it may be. Now, there are some limitations to this. There's some transparency sorting issues. There's some Z buffer issues. These are, these are things that are very common in real time alpha transparency stuff. And it's a little bit of a deep dive. I'm going to drop a link in the bottom of the description that kind of explains what all that stuff means. But essentially, it's that problem when you have, you know, leaves that are behind other leaves appear as if they are in front of them, even though they're behind them and, and that type of thing. You get this transparency sorting problem, right? And that's something that can absolutely happen. And there are ways to mitigate that problem. But it is kind of inherent to real time transparency sorting using alpha blend, where it's a degree. Now, the other alternative is using Alpha Clip. Alpha Clip doesn't have any of those problems. And it's much faster. It is much more inexpensive to render at a frame rate, to, to render every frame, than Alpha Blends are. But Alpha Clip is a binary transparency. It's either 100% transparent or it's 100% opaque. This is great for things like cutouts. It's perfect and designed for that. They will render really quickly and they will not have any transparency sortings, but you won't get any gradation of, of opacity or transparency. So it comes with its downsides too. Now, in this particular case, we have glass, right? This glass is semi-transparent. And if I check out this material and I look at its alpha, it's right plugged into this base color map here. And you can see that it is semi-transparent. And if I pop over to the alpha channel here, that's not pure white, that's not pure gray. Or that's not pure black, it's gray. It's a it's a gray color. And this is a 2K map, and so that's nice. Um, we could definitely make it smaller, but what, you know, good enough for now. Um, if we needed to optimize this, or if there was a whole bunch of these in the scene, then we could absolutely down-res these uh, textures even further, or do something like basis compression, which there's going to be a video about that coming soon, because that is heady stuff, and it is really powerful to get your file sizes very, very, very small. So if you want that video, go ahead and hit the like button or or let me know in the comments below. Yeah, tell us about basis compression. We really want to hear that. I don't know anybody that would ever say that in their lives. But if you know what basis compression can do, you'll be very interested in knowing how you can use it. Now, I really don't think these types of nodes work in hubs. I know some of them do and some of them don't, but I think the vast majority of them do not. So I'm just going to plug this color map straight into the base color and see if that makes a big difference. It does make a difference. It would be nicer if we had it, but oh well, I'm not going to go through the process of actually changing this base color map node in, in uh, Photoshop because I don't think that's really that relevant to our particular exercise today of just showing you how transparencies work. So now that we're doing that, we have this alpha transparency thing. Let's see, is this uh, 2K? Okay, all of this is 2K. Now it also looks like we have a GLTF occlusion map on here. I don't think that this is doing anything. If I double click on this and I check the red channel, which is the one that it's using, this is what it looks like. There's some data there. You know what? I'm just not going to worry about that for now. We're just going to try to sort out transparencies here. Sort, ha, get it. Okay, um, there are... Those two ways, Alpha Blend and Alpha Clip, are available for you to select in the material properties if you are in Eevee. Now, this is a little bit of a kind of like a Blender Easter egg. Shout out to Jim at Mozilla for pointing this out. But if you are in Eevee, then it appears under the material properties under settings. And you can see I'm not in Eevee. So in Cycles, I don't have it here. I, it's in a different location. I think it's somewhere in here, which I, I don't really want. If I switch my render engine to Eevee, then the material properties down here under Settings, it changes. You can see that now I have the Blend Mode here. So you need to have this Settings window in order to set that Material Blend Mode for the material under the Material Properties. And if you don't have that, just go ahead and pop your rendering engine over to Eevee, and it should be there. 
Now the blend mode that I want for this particular material is going to be alpha blend. It comes with some transparency sorting issues and it comes with a higher expensive render time, but it, it, it gives me an opportunity to have a semi-transparent, not just binarily a, a transparent uh, a blend mode. And so alpha blend is what I'm gonna need to use for this asset. Now, alternatively, I could set it to alpha clip and it would be either pure opaque or it would be pure transparent. That would be cutting it out. I need alpha blend. Okay, so that gives me that semi-transparency. Now, that setup like that should work inside of Mozilla Hubs. If you like this video, if this was helpful to you, please go ahead and hit like and subscribe and just continue to watch the videos in the series because we're going to go over every material on this lantern. Thanks so much.